Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, hey, fall is in the air. I was out the other day and was getting some fall shots. It was the lighting was kind of nice, and uh, I was kind of happy. So I, this is one of the images I got. I'll be sharing some more images with you on my tutorials. But today, I thought I would uh, share with you. Uh, the Tony Kuiper uh, Go panel. Now, I've had a lot of viewers asking if I would do some more Tony Kuiper, like luminosity masking videos. And that's why I'm doing this video today is to fulfill that for some, some of those out there that have been requesting it. Okay. I will also uh, link uh, Tony Kuiper's website in the description below in case you want to check out his panels. They're really reasonably priced. You'd be surprised how reasonably priced they really are. Now I'm not affiliated, affiliated with Tony in any way, but I really love his stuff. So this video is going to show you the Go panel. It's really cool for popping color into your image and working with the light and things like that. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to see how valuable that panel can be for you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Today, we're starting out in Lightroom. Now, this is the raw image right out of the camera. And basically what I did was just some basic adjustments on it and brought it to this point. As you can see here, here's my adjustments. You know, I have the white balance as shot. Um, and here's my exposure and highlights are pulled back a little bit. Shadows are opened up a little bit. Uh, no uh, presence adjustments like texture, clarity, dehaze. Nothing adjusted there. A little bit of vibrance and a little minus saturation there. Now in detail, I have no sharpening or no noise reduction. And on lens corrections, I have remove chromatic aberrations. I always do that and enable profile corrections. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click this and we're going to send this right into Photoshop 2020 and we'll get started. Now, here we are in Photoshop. I duplicated my background layer and renamed it Topaz Denoise AI because now I'm going to launch uh, Denoise AI and we'll go ahead and sharpen this image and get rid of the noise. I shot this at ISO 1600, so it's it's a pretty noisy image. Oh, there's a new update. Oh, that's good. So they'll let you know when there's a new update, as you can see right here. For now, I'm just going to click close on this. All right, and now we can see we have our original image here. We're zoomed in at 100%. Here's what the Denoise AI model looks like. Here's what the AI clear model looks like. And here's what the low light model looks like. So I think the best one here is the Denoise AI model. Now let's go ahead and click on auto. It takes a few seconds for it to render out. Now I'm just looking at the Denoise AI model up there. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. I think I might just add a little bit more sharpness. So I'm just going to drag the enhanced sharpness to the right. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good right there. I'm not going to do anything else to it. I'm just going to go ahead and click apply and that'll send me right back into Photoshop. And we're back in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and zoom in and get a good zoom in here. I'm zoomed in. If you look at my navigator here, I'm zoomed way in. I don't know how many percent I'm zoomed in, but it's a good bit. Let's look at the before. There's before. You can see the noise and the sharpness. And here's after uh, Topaz the noise. Yeah, so it's done a beautiful, beautiful job. Let me zoom back out. I want to use the uh, TK7 brand new Go panel to add a little bit of pop and color to this image today. Okay, it's really cool. And today's really just an introduction to some of, to some of the power of the TK7 panels. Okay, the luminosity panels and things. And Tony's always coming up with new stuff. So let me hold the option key down and hover over this uh, particular button right here. See where we have the uh, eyedropper tool and some color swatches here. And we can read the uh, description. Create infinity color masks. The color picker opens first. Use it to select a color from the image. Click OK and and then the infinity color mask interface opens in order to further refine the mask. It's really cool. So we'll click right here and there's our color picker. Now let's just pick a color. Like let's come up to this tree right up in here. And maybe a color right in here will give it a pick. And I'm going to click OK. And watch what happens. It generates this luminosity mask. Now with this mask, and I don't want to get real deep into it here, but I just want to show you the power of it here. We have different adjustments here we can refine. If I hold the option key down and hover over this area, it says this slider sets the brightness of the infinity color mask. If I hover over here, it says this slider sets the color feathering of the infinity color mask. Okay, so 
we can do those different things. So for instance, I can adjust this slider for the feathering, give it more feathering or less feathering, depending on what we want. And this one, if we pull it to the right, it makes the mask lighter. Now remember with a layer mask, whatever is light is going to be revealed. Whatever is black will be concealed and, and gray tones in between will be less uh, revealed or concealed, okay? Depending on where the gray tones are at, okay? So let's just pull this back to maybe, you know, something like that. All right, and now we're going to come down here. Now we have different options here for the output here. And we can do different things to refine the mask here. I'm not gonna get into all this today. <laughs> this is a very elaborate panel, but it can be very simple and easy to use. And I'm just gonna use it in a very easy way today. So I just made a couple adjustments here. And now we're gonna come down here and click this icon here is for curves. See, if I hold the option key down and hover over any of these icons, it'll tell you what these different things are, okay? This is a curves um, adjustment right here. So I'm gonna click that and watch what happens. It'll output that layer mask onto a curves here, right? So now I can take this curve and I can pull up on the curve and it's only gonna lighten that, that area that I picked with a picker tool, you see that? So I'm gonna brighten up the midtones a little bit and then I'm gonna pull down on the, uh, the uh, darker tones of the image here. Give it a little bit of an S-curve here. See that? Gives it a little bit of a contrast there, like so. Now let's do a before and after. Here's a before and here's an after. But you see how it's only targeting those certain colors, and it's pretty cool, right? So that's one thing we can do. Another thing we can do is come, and let's get that same tool right there, and let's pick a color like in here, say like this color right here. And now let's say we want to add some more saturation. So let's click OK now that we targeted that color. And that looks pretty good. Let's just leave it right the way it is here. And this time, let's go to this icon here. This icon will give us a hue and saturation adjustment, OK? So let's click it. And then that attaches that layer mask to it. Now we could, uh, that's the same as the uh, hue saturation adjustment found in the adjustment layers there, OK? But now we can take that saturation and start to drag it to the to the right and it's only going to get these orange oranger tones of colors okay so we move it to the right and you see that and any 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 color with that orange tone in is go, going to get saturated it's going to disregard all the other colors so just like so so let's look at the before here's the before and here's the after but this is the power of the uh of the Tony Kuiper luminosity panels and things. And there's so many different things in here. We have luminosity panels in here. We have this color picker tool, which is great when you're doing fall images, but that's pretty cool stuff, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at a before and after. So we started out looking like this right here, and now we look like this. So pretty quick and amazing results just with the uh, TK7 Go panel. If you feel you have too much saturation, you know, you can always come to the hue saturation layer and pull back in the saturation or come to the opacity and pull it off. You know, I always like to pull it the whole way off and then just drag it up slowly and stop at a point where I think it looks really good because we always tend, or at least I do tend to make too strong of an adjustment first. So I think that looks better. There's a before and there's an after, right? And then we could come to this curves adjustment where I, that's where I used the adjustment to lighten up these orange and yellow tones here, okay? So let's uh, click this off. There's a before and there's an after. And of course, you know, we could come here and either uh, affect the uh, curve here by changing the curve itself, or as I, again, like to do, just take the opacity, take the opacity the whole way off, and then just build it up slowly. I think it makes a lot of sense, something like there. And now here's the before and here's the after. Now let's look at the overall. Here's the original and here's the after. So pretty cool. I think that's more, more in line with how this image should look. Let's use the TK7 uh, Go panel for one final adjustment. And that will be, see the darker areas in these clouds up here? here? I want to make those a little bit darker just to add a little bit more contrast to the sky. So what I'm going to do is get the uh, Infinity Color mask again this guy right here the one we've been using let's click it because that's what i'm introducing you to today and let's click on say like this darker color right here now you can see it's a bluer color and it's fine right here i'm going to click ok and it's going to generate our mask i'm going to introduce you to a new button down here under modify and that's this guy right here if i hold the option key down it's going to tell me what that is this button expands the selected area in the mask more of the image is selected in small increments okay so Pretty cool. So watch these light areas get lighter as I expand the mask. You see that? They get a little lighter. 
a little lighter. And the, the button next to it will uh, contract the mask. Now, if we read the documentation here, it says uh, this button contracts the selected area in the mask. Less of the image is selected in small increments. So if you went too far, you can use this button. But I think that's good right there. And now let's click on a curves adjustment. And now we have a curves adjustment with that layer match mask attached to it. Now, what I'm going to do is change my blend mode from normal to multiply and just watch these darker areas up here in the sky when I do that. So here's normal. Now let's go down to multiply. Okay. Now let's shut this eyeball off. Here's the before and here's the after. It's subtle. You see that it's, it just gets slightly darker. If you need it to go darker, you can drag this curve on the left-hand side of the curve, drag it down. And we can make that even darker yet if we want to. So here's the before and here's the after. So cool. It just pops a little bit of contrast in that sky, darkens those darker areas. And again, I always like to take my opacity, take it the whole way off, and then just slowly build it up to the right and stop at the point where I think it looks right. And I'm thinking maybe right around 93%. Here's the before and here's the after. So let's go back to the original image. So we've come from here right out of Lightroom. And went to here very simply and easily with the uh, TK7 Go panel. And um, this image is not yet complete. You know, I would probably run it into Topaz Studio 2, pop some contrast into certain areas, maybe use Luminar 4, do some other things in Photoshop. But today I just wanted to pique your interest on the uh, Tony Kuiper TK7 uh, panels, specifically, specifically the Go panel today. It's really cool. And I thought this autumn scene, which I just shot the other day, I thought well, this would be a really good one to demonstrate this Go panel to, because I've had a lot of people asking, please, Dave, do some more uh, Tony Kuiper TK7 videos. And that's what this was about today. But I assure you, I'm going to do a lot more of these videos showing you how the TK7 panel and actions can really help. Well, there it is. Hey, it's fall. Don't you love this time of the year when the leaves start to change? I had to get out there the other day and take this shot. Okay, and I have some other shots that I'll share with you along the way here. But um, I used that Tony Kuiper uh, Go panel today. It's really cool. I hope you enjoyed that. And I have more Tony Kuiper videos, as I said earlier, going to be coming your way. Um, I'll also link uh, Tony's website in the description below in case you want to uh, pick up his panel. It's really uh, inexpensive, and you'd be surprised how inexpensive it really is, so check that out. Um, uh, Tony's a great guy. Now, I am not affiliated with Tony in any way, but I just really love his panels and actions. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.